Welcome to this week of Being in the Boom, the podcast, man. We have a, a very special guest, as we do, or as we try to do on a weekly basis. Um, this is our boy, man. A- anytime we get a chance to, you know, connect back with him and, and to have him in the fold, I mean, it's always a pleasure. Uh, welcome him back, Antonio Pittman. Good to be back, man. Pitt, Good to be here. Man, what's Absolutely. been going on with you, man? How everything been? Working, man. You know, I, I show up with... with with two of the three of the clan, <laughs> right. I'm in here and you got your three. Man, exactly. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a dad collaboration, it's but that's a good thing. thing. You it, know what I mean? It is indeed daddy daycare. <laughs> We're we killing the stigma, man. Right now, Black man. men don't cheat. It, exactly. Black <laughs> men take care of their kids. I, I'm, rec- I'm going to record this real quick because we're doing a show. Right. And uh, I want to show all the kids we got right here. <laughs> That are there, man. This is this is what we do. This is a beautiful thing. Absolutely. But, but nonetheless, man, I I know you've been paying attention to what's going on. Obviously, this is a dead period too with Ohio State. Um, Ryan Day just had a, a press conference, and I, I think it piques everybody's interest. Coming out of the spring, you know, we had a quarterback transfer. Yep. Um, but Justin Fields is the main guy. That's the guy that everybody is, uh, you know, anticipating him being a starting quarterback. Right. I mean, I want to get some some questions or answer from you about. What's your outlook of Justin Fields and the best case scenario for him uh, in this offense, and possibly the worst case scenario? Worst case scenario could be would be him just. Um, I wouldn't say not living up to the hype, right? Because he's been he's been a kid that performed, and he's been at the top of his class coming out of recruiting. I mean, I think he is the biggest recruit Ohio State has ever landed, overall player. Um, but I, I think. He just has to come in and just play his game. He has to come in and just tune everything out. Um, it was good that he got in in the spring. He didn't really show a lot, but I, I expected that. I right. didn't expect him to come in and light the spring up because, you know what I mean, F- for us guys, we're looking back at the, the season Dwayne had, mm-hmm. and you're that expecting him to just come out and just slang that thing. Right. right. But you have to look back. Like, Dwayne was a special case. Mm-hmm. Right. He was. because no it, Because from the passing numbers that he put up in, in the season, there has been none like it throughout the course of the Big Ten. I mean, the, the kid sat back and broke Drew Brees' record. Mm-hmm. Right. So we're looking back at – we're looking at Justin, and we're like, oh, is he, is he going <laughs> is, is to drop yeah. a 99er on us? Right. That's a lot of pressure, though. It's, it's, too, it's a lot of pressure, but for that kid – I don't. I think he'd be all right. He yeah. just has to just connect and just stay true to himself, and don't try to be Dwayne. That could be the biggest mistake that he could make. And, and that's one of the things that you know piques my interest. Is it going to be a situation to where, you know, last year we saw Dwayne throw the ball all around the field, and that seemed to be the way in which Ryan Day wanted to run his offense. Right. So with that being said, is it going to kind of is that trend going to continue in terms of Ryan Day? opening it up a little bit and not relying on the run as much as Urban Meyer did. And I know there was times last year where Dwayne Haskins had to run the ball, and that's more so because Urban Meyer kind of forced his hand a little bit. We saw in, in, in versus Maryland him being uncomfortable running the ball, but he was effective. Yeah. Now we know Justin Fields is a little bit better of an – probably a lot better of an athlete than uh, Dwayne Haskins. Are we going to see Ryan Day – tailor that towards his game, or do we, is it going to be a situation to where Ryan is, no, my offense is my offense. We're going to spread the ball around. I'm not going to ask this guy to be a, an athlete. I'm going to ask him to be a quarterback. I think last year the offense was tailored around Dwayne's du- skill set. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I, I think going into the season, once Urban got that suspension, I think Ryan Day was doing the Birdman hands were up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like, honestly, I, I think because it gave him an opportunity to showcase what he can do as a coordinator. Right. And – you know, he solidified himself as probably the best play caller within those first couple games Urban was games. gone in college football, yeah. which was very important, which was very needed, and which pretty much helped his resume. Mm-hmm. And then you see when Urban came back, how the offense kind of got tailored back into the kind of the, the spread right. and all of that. And it really wasn't a lot of reading from Dwayne, and it was just playing off of just pure instincts. Mm-hmm. And that showed a lot in the Purdue game. Right. You know what I mean? So I think I think Ryan Day will stick to his guns. I think he will just uh, tailor the offense around Justin Fields. But hopefully, the de- the development of Justin Fields shows in the progression throughout the course of the season. Because that's one thing that, as a quarterback at Ohio State, the progression has been very slow mm-hmm. from year one to two to three. Right. The only guy that made those jumps, those leaps and bounds, was Troy. Mm-hmm. And and I hate to bring up Troy. I mean, no, but it is, that, it is. But overall, yeah, right? You haven't seen it. TP didn't. He he, mm-hmm. he didn't progress. 
Um, Braxton didn't get better as a passer mm-hmm. throughout the course of the years. You know what I mean? And, and that showed as he kept taking the hits and the hits and the hits. And then eventually he goes out in the spring, he throws a five-yard pass and his shoulder, right. he injures his shoulder, you know. Yeah. So I, I think Justin progressing throughout the course of the year and Ryan Day sticking to his guns and tailoring the offense around Justin and – JK. Yeah, I mean, that's a hell of a point, though. I Man, I, I didn't really think about that. The quarterback's not progressing over the years. And when you really look back and break that down, that was that's a huge fact. thing for Ohio State. Is, you know, we, we didn't see those leaps and bounds to where we. You didn't. It, it, it didn't you, but we, that's why you never seen them guys getting drafted. That's what I was like getting that. ready to say. That's, we didn't really have those NFL guys, and maybe that's part of you the reason. You know what I mean? If Beckman would have bounced when he would have bounced, it, it would have helped him. You, you right. look at Cordell's situation. Right. Cordell should have pulled the back. He should have left. Right. You know what I mean? It only hurt him to come back. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I can't sit here and say that Cordell didn't get better because what I can say is the offense changed. Right. And they start using JT's game for Cordell those first couple games, and mm-hmm. Cordell ended up getting benched. Yeah. And that didn't work out in his favor. So Cordell is, is kind of on, on the bubble of that list because his game was airing it out, Devin Smith going along, and then that set up Zeke's runs in which – the play action came into play in which you had to really do a, a double threat. Right. But, like I say, with uh, Herman leaving and then Cordell was never really supposed to be the guy, they, he was in a failure yeah. setup situation. Bad deal. Um, so I mean, That's one of the things that always piques my interest, man. Just What's going to be what's gonna go down next year with this team? What's it going to look like? A new coach, new quarterback, and just a bunch of new puzzles uh, on the offensive end, man. So that's, that's, that's interesting. I think I agree with Pitt, though. I mean, long as he comes in and he just do him and not try to be, you know, you know that guy that that's 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 just trying to be like uh, not Cordell, but uh, we Dwayne need him to Hassan. be that guy. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> but no, not, no, not Haskins. No, he, he, no. he need to be the guy for right. sure. But as long as he comes on and he's not trying to be Haskins, right. and, and, and and he just play his game and like you said, you know. Coach uh, Day does his job of, of tweaking the, the little things. Mm-hmm. I think he'd be cool. Yeah, man, I hope so, man, because I, I want to see him flourish. I, I want to see Ohio State get into a situation to where we pick up where we left off in a good way. And, you know, in years past, it's kind of been, you know, stagnant, at, like you talked about, at the quarterback spot, and, and guys have been kind of slow to develop. I want to see us take that next step and see guys surge uh, to being dominant and great right off the bat. And, yeah, I mean, he didn't really play a lot at Georgia uh, his freshman year, but – He's here, had the spring, got a chance to get comfortable with guys. Now, take hold of the starting job because, hell, ain't no backup it's quarterback. I mean, it's, it's yours. It's yeah. his. So he his. Got the, the show is his, man, and he need to come out firing. Right. But the schedule is so weak yeah. that it allows it, it allows <laughs> a lot of room. But what he don't want to do is open that room for another player to come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it, it does open that gap to where, you know, we can get – get ahead to some 40-point first halves. Right. And a lot of guys are sitting. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you don't want to risk him because you don't have a guy behind him to that can right. come in and, and, and pretty much hold it down, which we don't know yet. Mm-hmm. But but then you open it up for a guy to actually come in and get those game reps. Right. Get comfortable in the setting. You know what I mean? And, and, and start lighting that thing up. And you know how Columbus get. Mm-hmm. They start calling for somebody <laughs> else real quick. Mm-hmm. You, you know, the crazy thing is, bro, is – We've never been in a situation at Ohio State ever to where the three quarterbacks on our roster, the top three guys, were all transfers. And that right. is Justin Fields, yeah. uh, Gunnar Hoke, dude transfer from uh, Kentucky, Kentucky. Yep. and then uh, the quarterback we got from West Virginia. That's the only one that really has the experience of playing. So that's the wild shit really about this but, season. Is But that how many transfers does Ohio State take? It was weird when we took Larry Grant. Yeah. From, he from was a Juco. Juco. I can't remember us taking The, the Juco last guys. one was like Chris Vance, I right. want to say. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, they wasn't taking guys like that from Juco at Ohio State because we never felt as if we had to. Right. And you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, things get desperate mm-hmm. when, and I'm not saying it's desperate, but when a school like Ohio State. Oh, it was State, desperate for a backup quarterback. No, no, no. no it was super <laughs> desperate. But I hate to say that right. because that's, that's a, a knock to the guy who we recruited. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Who we brought in. That could be a slight to him. Right. But, you know what I mean? Like, we were thin at the linebacker spot and we went and got Larry Grant. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? And for Ohio State to do that, you shouldn't have to. But, I mean, a lot of things have happened. You know, right. the, the kid from Hoban committed the one year. And mm-hmm. then – Danny Clark. Then they came and got uh, uh, Tate Martell. Right. And mm-hmm. which forced him to go elsewhere. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, it's, it's kind of like you're playing chess and checkers all in one and you kind of knock yourself out of position. And we knew – all of us knew that this wasn't an offense fit for Tate. Right. 
But you know what I mean? You just had to have that guy because you didn't want to face him. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what that was. But, I mean, this is an interesting situation. Yeah. Um, Speaking of you saying about Tate, I mean, if you think about what what, what Tate could have done, I mean, I think think if Tate would have stayed, Ryan Day could have, you know, fixed it up to to a point where – Nope. No. You don't think so? No. No, no. No, there was nothing that you could do to help him because of the fact he couldn't throw. Exactly. Like he, he could he wasn't <laughs> he couldn't throw, bro. Like the only thing he could have done is probably went to like a H back position, but was he really willing to sacrifice going into the slot and him being basically a dang Sansenbacher? Mm-hmm. Right. That's that's the closest thing he could have become at Ohio State. Unless you got some points for us as to why you know Tate could have been <laughs> that guy. No, I mean I mean, I just think nowadays in college football. I ain't gonna say you could put anybody at the position, but you could put a guy back there and he ain't really gotta be able to, to throw. He could run, 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 run. Yeah, but that's what we that's the tailoring of, you know, Ryan Day from, that's what I'm from, saying. Yeah. from Urban Meyer he may have been right. okay, but not Ryan Day, because Ryan Day wants to open his thing up and pass that thing. Right. In which we saw last year. Hell the Purdue game alone, I think we threw the ball sixty times. Yeah. And we pretty pretty much had to. They was able to, you right. know, kinda control the run game, but sixty that shit's never happened in an Ohio State game. Yeah. That's crazy. It may have been even more than sixty attempts. To be honest, it, it, it was it was, it was like almost terrible. close to seventy. It was something yeah. terrible. Because I, I he broke that. the passing record yeah, that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was terrible, and <laughs> I hope we never see those type of days again. <laughs> unless man. somebody run it throwing for a thousand, and we just yeah, yeah we, unless we he's kill it, it, it out, and, and and we just we we run and put numbers on the board. And right, that's the only time you want to see that. But you know, I don't really want to go back into that last <laughs> year. That defense was horrible. Yeah, it was the oh, worst man. defense in the hostage history, but we'll skip over that. <laughs> right, right. A- another dude, man, that I want to hit on, man, a guy that we all play with, um, gets an opportunity to, to, to become a coach under some excruciating, painful, and embarrassing circumstances. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know what happened with Zach Smith and, and so on. But Brian Hartline. Brian Hartline takes hold of the job, mm-hmm. develops some guys. We saw the guys that he coached be better than they were the year before. And now – we're watching the hard line take, take control of this recruiting shit, which is mind blowing to me because that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to get into coaching. Cause I, I don't want to be on the road recruiting. I know how hard that is. I won't be able to be around my kids. And now we're watching the hard line go out and get top recruits in the country. I mean, talk about how big that is. And right now, Heartline is ranked the number one recruiter in the big 10, which is crazy. And the number six recruiter in the country. After only being That's a head huge. coach, but not head coach. After only being a position coach for a year, not that even shit a year. is wild. Not even, it was the interim, bro, exactly. Yeah. And he didn't get the title until pretty much after the season, yeah. correct? Yeah. So yep. he's six months on the job, but he got the pedigree exactly that everybody wants. You know exactly. what I mean? He played in the league. He was a, he was an underdog mm-hmm. at the, at receiver. You know what I mean? He was a fourth round pick, but coming from Glen Oak, he broke his leg his mm-hmm. senior year. Correct? Was his junior year or his senior year? I can't remember which one of them years it was. I, I remember he broke his leg, and then he set out a, a full season of football. So he's had to overcome a lot mm-hmm. to get to this point. And then he played behind um, Ted Gonzo. And then he worked Robo. his way yeah. in with Robo, him mm-hmm. and Robo, playing in the slide. And then, you know I mean? Harlan has, has always bust his ass. Right. I'm, I'm never going to take that from him. You know what I mean? I didn't agree with the hire at first. And it wasn't because I didn't think he was qualified. I just... It's just me and just my my quirks are just how <laughs> shit be done. He's proving everybody you know wrong. I mean? but he's proved me wrong. Hartline always been a good dude. I yeah. knew he was gonna take the job and, and and be very successful with it and and actually work with the kids because shit, he was he was taught by one of the best. Right. And Hazel was probably one of the best coaches that we've had come through Ohio State. I'll put yeah. my hat on that as a position Any coach. Like he worked the hell out of those guys, and those guys continued to get better throughout the years. Right. From San Antonio, my. Uh, my freshman and sophomore year, you know what I mean? From that guy just learning how to run routes the right way and blocking and just doing all the little extra shit. And, you know what I mean? Because Tone was a selfish dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he, him helping Teddy and, and, and Gonzo get better. You got to think. I mean, Hazel coached three first-round draft picks. Mm-hmm. Um, Robo was a second-round pick. Uh, you had Hartline that went in the fourth. You Roy had, Hall was drafted. Roy Hall was drafted in the fifth. You had Sanzenbacher that mm-hmm. got drafted. You had uh, Posey. Posey. Yeah, Devere. Yeah. Damn, I, I don't know. When you really break down his resume, I mean, he Bro, is Hazel strong. Was, Hazel was, they say Hazel was strong with it, man. Yeah. I mean, like, the, the guy went out there and, and actually delivered, man, and had those guys ready. So it, it's 
for for Hardline to be flourishing like this, I'm not surprised, right. man. Like honestly, I'm not Can't surprised, be. man. Because when you go in there. I mean, let's call it for what it is. He's a handsome guy. Right. He coming in there with the rolly on, <laughs> the loafers and no socks, the, 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 the fresh comb over, right. you know what I mean, a little speckle of a beard, uh, and he talking that talk with right. him. And you got to think he's 31. And that's the thing, man. And that's that's the thing I think that plays a big part of him being a part of Ohio State. And he State went and here. Recruiting. Mm-hmm. And he, he played. So now it's looking like I got a possibility for a job after I'm done. Right. Exactly. He played here. You know, he played in the NFL, got drafted, like, what what else Got would a kid? Is, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what else would a kid like say? Like, all right, my coach did this. Like, maybe I can do the same thing he right. doing. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting coached by this guy that has walked the steps of you know his, his, getting to the and next. And he level. has access to call the guys that just left. Exactly. I can I can call. Paris Campbell. I can call the Dwayne on the phone. Drafted. I can call Mike Thomas. Yeah. I can call Teddy. And then now. I can call whoever in the league right now. I can call Ryan Tannehill, the yeah. uh, NFL quarterback, or whoever his head coach was with the Browns or with the Miami Dolphins. I mean, he's so relatable to guys, man. And I just think that was an awesome hire for Ohio State to be able to go and get a guy that they've developed from ground up mm-hmm. and to put him in this position to, to be a, a successful coach and to watch him just work wonders in the recruiting game. Man, that shit was shocking to That's- me because it, recruiting is hard. It's yeah. very hard. And everybody can't go sit in the living room with mom and dads but, and be able to sell themselves to the parents and to the kid. At yeah. this pace right now, in probably three years, he'll be interviewing for head coaching. Oh, I, just, probably yeah. less than that. You probably, know what I mean? To be honest, because Marcus Freeman been interviewing. Right. He's been interviewing. Mm-hmm. He's he's had three or four. I don't want to put his business out there because right. I talk to him very frequently. <laughs> but he's he's been interviewing. You know what I mean? And that's just – that's crazy to know that guys that – Marcus, for me, coming in the class 04 together, mm-hmm. and then Hartline is a year b- behind me, I believe. Yep. So he broke his like a senior year. Mm-hmm. So um, to just know that those guys are getting those opportunities and are flourishing that's like the new that, wave, man, like that's, that's, that's crazy. Now, that just goes to show they work their ass off of these positions, that too. Man, and nothing is given, you know. They work their ass off, but also, like, even in the pros and college, they want to see younger coaches now, it just seems like. I mean, and I, and I like that because I don't want to see these. I mean, I'm no disrespect, but some of these guys are dinosaurs to where they can't adapt to what's gonna be new. That's what I'm saying. Or they're yeah. not willing to. Exactly. They're so caught in their ways. I've been successful at this level for this many years. Well, so be it. Right. But now it's a whole new wave of guys coming in that you got to be able to relate to. You got to be able to motivate. It's no longer a point in time where a coach can yell. MFU, yeah. uh, get your ass here yeah. in your face, but and that's, that's motivating the guy. But it's, that's that's a lot of these kids don't have the guidance now but to even, even co- accept that. Even the college a lot of them swing back. Exactly. So you got to be able to be uh, relatable and to be able to figure out ways to motivate them without the up in the face. And I'm just going to be a hard nosed coach, and that's going to be that. You can't do that shit no more. No, you don't. You, you you can't. But a lot of these kids don't have the respect, and they don't. They're not looking for that father figure that they that they need. Right. You know what I mean? Like we had those type of coaches, and for real, like. It helped and it hurt. It just depends on what time of the day it was and what responses they were willing to take back from mm-hmm. you. You know what I mean? So, but 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 the energy is needed. I, I think um, getting these younger coaches out there and, and giving them the opportunity to to fight. I mean, it gives an old man like me some hope. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get into coaching, but it does look good. It makes you feel good to know that your peers is is is, is thriving in their career paths, yeah. and it just gives us an outlook. I mean, we got the future in the room with us right now. Right. right. You know what I mean? So it gives us that connection that we'd be like, man, you know what? I'm going to call my man up and uh-huh. see. You right. know what I mean? And shit, they still owe us a little something on the books right. anyway. <laughs> hey, guys, taking a quick break from the podcast to talk to you about our friends at Keep It Simple Socks most comfortable socks that you could possibly purchase. Why wouldn't you want to get them? I love them. Boom loves them. Pitt loves them. Our kids love them. They're super comfortable and they're a local company. Check them out at KeepItSimpleSocks.com Check them out at KeepItSimpleSocks on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Hey, they're comfortable and they're a local company. Go get them. No, man, that's uh, 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 that's crazy. And I'm so happy for Heartline, man. I'm glad Ohio State made that move. Um, and like just talking about too. talking about coaches that's up in your face. I mean, you look at Freddie Kitchens. Yeah, Freddie was a coach in Arizona. You, um, <laughs> you know, when I was there, and Freddie was one of those guys where he was going to cuss you out, and he was going to be up in your shit. He even cussed me out at point in times, but he was going to love on you too. So I can see why players. You got to have a balance are able to rally around because you've seen when they fired uh, your boy last year, Hugh, when Freddie took over that job in Cleveland, 
players rallied around him. And it was the smartest decision in the world for them to kind of keep him in place as the head coach, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Because when you got a young quarterback like Baker Mayfield, you don't want what's been happening with Cleveland for so long to where coaches have been in and out. Players can't adapt to one system. They can't get a feel for a coach because they don't know whether they're coming or going. So I think that was the best move. And just talking about coaches, and with that being said, we can transition to some of these topics in the NFL, man. What y'all got? Man. Well, obviously, we didn't land our guy, the guy that you said for sure that was going. Man, I just in. knew Jeremy McCoy was going to the Browns, man. Pissed I mean, off. Yeah, I mean, but what reason you think he really passed up on the Browns and I think it was the Ravens? I don't know why you passed up on Cleveland, man. When you look at the defense that we got a potential to have already with the guys that we got in place, that would have been nasty. You talk about Miles Garrett, uh, uh, Vernon. I mean, Where shit. is he originally from? Richardson. I mean, so Oklahoma. many guys. So many guys. I, I, I know that he went to college at Oklahoma. Great. But is that that's it, home for him? It's, it's somewhere Oklahoma. Yeah. I just, maybe the weather. Yeah, man. I, I guess for him I can, to stay in Charlotte, I, 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 I guess think I the can nice understand. weather, but they got Keywan Short. They, they've had a I'm nice defensive say, line, too, they, for a couple and years. they've been competitive. They yeah. front seven is, is over there is pretty nice. I just nice. think, man, I'm a it's Browns real fan. Good. I want to see my Browns get – Of course we all. Players that fucking can help us, man. No, I want to see them. I wanted to see that, too, man. But I think – Cleveland is stacked, though. They are. Like, that front seven is nasty. And I, and I think he didn't want to go into a role like Sue. Like, mm -hmm. I thought Sue's role in, in, in uh, L.A. last year would be a lot more dangerous than him next to Donald. Mm -hmm. And um, But he did a lot of, ro it did a, um, a lot of rotating, rotating mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature, and they never found his fit. You know what I mean? And I think Cleveland is – is Cleveland going to a 4-3? I don't know, man. I got no clue. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would think they would have to <laughs> for some reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. And maybe he wants to be a three, four nose. Right. But you you never know, cause I so, so you never know what what could have played a factor in that. And I think I don't think it's about money. The dude was what a third pick, yeah, fourth he got, pick. He got paid there. Then he got paid again. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really one about the money. I th I think it could have been about the weather, and then him just. Maybe Cleveland wanted to give him a three-year deal, and he like, nah. I don't know, man. P, I see, you, I see you keep staring at my eye, man. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain <laughs> this shit. Man. Yesterday, I, I'm in the gun range with my kids as we got here. I wasn't and, looking uh, at you. Man, he was looking at my eye. Man. <laughs> my eye I'm out here. I'm, I'm looking like Scar from uh, from from Lion King right now, man. It hey. looked crazy. But yesterday, I'm in the gun range with my kids, man, and uh, I'm in there with my youngest son, CJ, and you know he's shooting his gun as we do. I got on my eye gear. And for whatever reason, the shell casing popped out and the shit goes behind my eye, behind my, my eyewear. And it was the it's most hot. painful thing I've ever experienced. It's almost like, man, I wouldn't, I've never been shot, so I can't say it's almost like what it feels like to be shot. But, you know, when you hear somebody say they got shot and they, they say that shit was burns, hot. That shit was hot. Was that hot. shit burned. <laughs> <laughs> but this is hot. That, and then he got the nerve to tell me, Ralphie, <laughs> Dad, if you would have died, I would have took you to the park and buried you in the park. <laughs> Like, dude, do you really care about your dad at this point in time? Bro, bro. But yeah, they've been watching, eyes, man. man. I don't know. <laughs> they've been watching too much of Netflix originals and shit, man. They, try, man. they just going to give you a park. Man, exactly, man. <laughs> Name a bench after you. <laughs> but yeah, I had to get yeah, you that, man. man. We could jump back on the NFL, it man. My, you got that Ralphie, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, so a, a guy, um, Pitt, you and I have had the injury to this guy that I'm going to talk about. Uh, has, that has Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley is right now dealing with the cartilage issues in his knee. And there was an article that just came out with Sean McVay. He talked about how they're not going to make Todd Gurley be the bell cow running back. He's going to be more of their uh, their service guy, their all-purpose guy, and not the guy that we saw get 25, 30 touches. Talk about that a little bit and how delicate that knee situation is because, to be honest, that's – the reason why we aren't playing right now. That's the reason why our careers were cut short because we had to have Michael Fracture. The only person I've seen that shit work for was Ted Ginn. Yeah. The, and man, he wasn't a running back. And he wasn't a running back. Yeah. And he does a lot of straight line running. He does some cuts. But as a receiver, you know, he can round off his cuts a lot and he can do a lot of things to kind of supplement off that or cut off the wrong foot mm -hmm. with, with the proper training and to do things of that nature. Well, Gurley... They're going to work the shit out of him regardless of what they're trying to say and they're trying to scale this back. The same thing. And they're, and they're putting, this, they're putting this target on his back now and letting it be known thing. of what it is. And I think they're setting it up for them to release him. But I think he got too much guaranteed money that's still in the books, that's, that's on the books right now, for them to cut their ties with him. If they want to be fair, do an operation on him, make him, 
have him sit out, p- put him on the PUP, mm-hmm. bring him back around probably around week ten or week eleven, and just kind of give him that chance, man. And for his agent, whoever else, I think they should be trying to take that route, man, because this is such a serious injury People and a serious know, situation man. to deal with. You know what I mean? When you the, the cuts and everything about the injury. And the way that they go in, it's a small procedure. It's like a scope, man. And you right. actually think like, ah, oh, this ain't going to be right. shit, man. I'm going to bounce back from this. I remember telling Beans, like, bro, don't fuck around with this knee. Nah, man, I'd be cool, man. I'd be bro, cool. And, and he didn't want to listen. I, I did not want to listen And I'm like, all. and then as the season went on, that knee brace got bigger mm-hmm. and bigger <laughs> and bigger. And, and I'm getting it drained and getting on a drained weekly basis. Because it fills up. But once you get it drained and shit, it, it feels a lot better. Yeah. And then it starts feeling like new. And then you go out there and that shit get to popping. And it get to clicking. Mm-hmm. And it get to giving away. And then you start having a cartilage that's just like floating around in your knee. And it's getting locked in the joints. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a lot that goes with it. And the only thing that can heal that is time and staying off of that knee. Right. And he needs to have a procedure and, and, and sit back and just... And just chill. I mean, he he had his money. I understand that they're trying to make their title run before that window closes. But McVeigh, like, your job security is there. Right. He's like, you got your there. quarterback. You got your line. Mm-hmm. You got your running back. You just drafted a running back in the third round. They should have kept they Buddy on the roster uh, that they had last year during the playoffs that played oh, yeah, great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cat, that was in uh, Denver for a number of years. I yeah. can't think of his name. Uh, Roly Poly, big dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, But he was good uh, as hell. He was in Carolina, too, for yeah. some of the season yeah, last yeah. year, too, mm-hmm. and they cut him, man. He bounced around a little bit. He bounced uh, around all last year. Yeah, he did. He did. You know what I mean? It was actually just so. I think, who he's tying with? And he was a guy that went unsigned for I don't know how long. Like, free agency came and went. And he was still out there. I don't know yeah, why. They should have kept him. And then, right that, and then that um, they should have kept him. And then their third round pick they got that would have gave. Who did they drop in the third round? I can't. I don't know his name off the top, but I know they they took it back pretty early. And um, they should have kept him, man. They they got to give Gurley a break, man, because that that's a serious injury, and that's the same injury that it, that put Mars Stoudemire out, put Grant Hill out. Um, a, a number. C.J. Anderson, Anthony, man. Yeah, Y'all all up. Anthony <laughs> Anthony Hardaway, right. Penny Hardaway. Um, a shitload of hockey players have that injury. Reggie Bush came back and played decent, but he was never the same. No, he was never the he same. He was never the same say, after. Nah, he right. was never the same. And he was never like a, a guy that was going to be getting a 25 or 30 carries a game. Yeah, he was a guy that zigged and zagged right. a lot. Yeah. So them cuts hurt, and yeah. he started trying to be like a little pounder through the hole. Mm-hmm. It, it that, took away from his game. It right. changed him, him up a lot, and it, and it wasn't all. him. But he had his best season after he had the surgery in, in Detroit mm-hmm. when he went for 1,000. Mm. But, I mean, overall, though, man, that's a – I, I hope they take their time, man, because that, that's that's serious. And, and I hate it had to be him, but I, I'm so happy he got them chips. Yeah, me, me too, because you, you know how it goes. The minute they see you start to decline and you have some serious injury, they're cutting you. And I'm glad he was able to get bro, that. What, you what, said what, it, though. Bro, you, you four look, for 55 and 40 guaranteed or something like that? You look back at, at just how, how valuable injuries are, and I'm so happy he got his chips. And, and this is taking it to a whole other sport. But then you look at a guy like DeMarcus Cousins. Mm-hmm. He's probably missed two hundred million dollars oh, in man. guaranteed money over the past couple of years from injuries alone. They're gonna mess it again, probably. So, so you're looking back at just injuries and how they affect the, the pay scale and how teams value you and mm-hmm. look at you. You know, what I mean, he's out there getting picked up for the low. For Isaiah the, Thomas was another guy about to break the bro, bank. Bro. See, his was his was 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 itchy. Was like was real sketchy because he was his height. Right. But I think he was gonna get a nice. In basketball, you look at a $60, $70 million deal like, oh, that ain't shit. But right. in football, you're like, man, he <laughs> man, got paid. Got right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but then you look at the, the like basketball when guys are getting 180 160 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody's going to be up next year for a max deal with, what, 220 Right. You know what I'm Nothing. saying? Like, like you're looking at those numbers and you're like, damn. Unreal. You know what I mean? But we're looking at girl, he's like, man, he got that four for four with, right. that, <laughs> with that 40-something guarantee. Right. Like, he hit a lick and you're like, shit, man. You know man. what I mean? In two seasons, Brown can pay out. A whole NFL, like the, the top guy on the team, right. out of his basketball salary. In two years of his contract. And not miss nothing. And not miss a, <laughs> and not miss a beat, you know what I'm saying? But hopefully they do the right thing by Gurley, man. If McVay going to be a man of his word and just use him, just, just let him have the surgery. Mm-hmm. Unless they've already gave him the surgery. I think they already gave him the surgery, honestly. I think they, uh, quietly they already let him have surgery. He had that surgery. No, he, he had one. Well, he oh, had, he oh, had oh, one. Okay. He I, had one. Then TMZ caught him on camera coming out of a restaurant, mm-hmm. and he was limping. Something terrible. That's when I think he had it. And I pray uh-huh. it wasn't the microfracture surgery that they gave him. You know it is. But I, I just – I don't understand why it would have been that. There's no reason to give a microfracture if we already got countless cases and knowing the outcome of the shit. Well, 
give him another scope and just right. he'll, well, well sometimes you know what I mean it, it gets to the point to where you have to do something mm-hmm. maybe that gap where that cartilage was missing at was so gone mm-hmm. that they had to go in and do gone something because gone. that's where it's going to be slipping at it's going to be so much irritation that's where all the inflammation comes from and then that's why you have to keep draining it and keep draining it and keep draining it. You know what I mean? So therefore, I think it probably progressed to the to the worst scale of the mm-hmm. microfracture, to where it was essentially bone on bone. And then they went in and did that surgery. You know what I mean? And for people don't know, man, I feel like surgery made mine worse, in my opinion. I don't think you had the time to heal. I should have never played the 2012 season, and which I, I told you. So hold I stand on, on that. You had your surgery when? After 2011 season. My best year in the league, right. ran for over a thousand yards. I had the surgery in January, and if you get microfracture, so when were you was back? I was back in camp. There's no reason for me to have been back in camp. But did the, they rush you to do this? Or yeah. Uh, so the deal was, I mean, you can look up articles right now. Kim Wizenhut was saying, well, Benny needs to be doing uh, whatever he can to get back because you have Ryan Williams here, who yeah. we had drafted the year before in the second round, and I'm like, damn, I just ran for a thousand yards, but they got this running back they drafted in the second round who. His rookie year, he tore up his knee, but they're pushing him because they want to see him succeed. So I'm like, man, I got to do whatever I can to get back. I ain't thinking about nothing else right. but doing what I need to do. So I was supposed to start the season on the PUP, but I'm like, fuck it. I can't afford to do this. This is about to be my make or break year, and essentially I'm playing for a new contract at this point in time. I'm going into my fourth year, so I got to come back. Mm-hmm. In hindsight, it was like it was the dumbest thing in the world because I should never came back. But anyways, I rushed myself to come back in um, but it, in training camp, and the trainers actually let me do this shit. This is why I hate NFL team trainers because they didn't. The, the pressure was on them you? to get you back too. Exactly, though. you know what I mean? Like that, that's the that's what people don't understand about the business of that sport, man. It's like everybody's working against you mm-hmm. to get you out there. For one, either they want to get you out there, get you on film, show you running around so they can cut your ass and say that you're healthy. Right. right. Or they just want to get you on the field because they want you to play, regardless of at what expense or it's what it is, knowing mm-hmm. that we got two running backs on this team that together only got two good legs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the reality of it. You, you know what I'm saying? Like they, They're not looking at it like that. You know what I, well, they, they were, mm-hmm. but they just didn't give a damn. You right. know what I'm saying? It's like, shit, we paying Baines. It was our first round pick. Larry getting up there in their age. Mm-hmm. Kurt gone. Quarterback situation is nah, it's right. iffy. You know what I mean? Hey, somebody got to get out here and go. All right, who do we who do we like more? All right, we like Ryan more. We're gonna give him a little bit of a break. Let's Younger, get Beans yeah, out here, right? <laughs> and, and, and let's just give him a go. Right, it's a cutthroat business. Man. It is. It is, man. It's, it's very foul, man. But hey, it is what it is, man. That make you think of like all these injuries, and then the, the NFL want to go to eighteen regular season games. I think That's, that would be stupid. I think that would be so dumb. And um, reason being is because. 16 is already a long season as Man, is. What? And then what is two more games going to do outside of add more revenue to the owner's pockets? That's all so, they, that's all they think about. So though. if they take away pre-season two preseason games, two pre-season games mm-hmm. but start paying the guys contracts at the beginning of the preseason instead of that measly ass $300, mm-hmm. your contract kicks in so you get two extra weeks of pay. Mm-hmm. I think that will work. I think guys will be up for that. But with those 18 games, are they taking away the wild card? Mm. So I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know the fine details of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Because if, if you're taking away that wild card game and you essentially leaving those those extra two games as like a play-in or, or somewhat, however they try to, to dial it up. Now, if they keep it 18 plus the four preseason plus the wild card and however mm-hmm. on, however much – of the playoff that they're going in, they foul as hell. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> in 18 games, the pay, the pay yeah. has to go up. Right. Got it to. has to. Got to. It has to. I, I just don't understand it, man. I, mean, I, I get it from an ownership perspective and, you know, trying to generate as much revenue as they can. And, you know, they don't make the same amount of money for the preseason as they make for the regular season. But they're not paying out the same either. When that, you, when, everybody, that too. When everybody on the team is only making $300 from and, the top guy to the bottom guy. So that too. But, but, but concession is still the same. Jersey sales are still the same. Mm-hmm. Um, ticket prices are ticket lower. Price, no, they're not. For oh, preseason? Pre-season? Yeah, they're much lower. How much lower? I'm willing to bet 50% lower than regular season. I don't think so. We're going to have to look that up, man. I We're going to definitely have to I look that up. I thought they were the same. No, hell no. I There's no way. I, I wouldn't pay that much for but, but let's talk about like this, though. Dollars, when think. you're going overseas and they holding those games in those coliseums that's sitting 100,000 people, mm-hmm. and you got the, the Jaguars versus the Steelers, and you see an Odell jersey in right. the crowd – because these people just love football. I go to and, Mexico, which and, is crazy too. Yeah, it, but they're selling out hundred thousand mm-hmm. at a hundred dollars a ticket. Mm. 
plus alcohol sales. They're, I mean, they're plus making everything. They're making a shit. They're making they way money. more money. Plus the revenue. They're streaming those games because they come on TV mm-hmm. so early. So they're getting the streaming money. They're getting the advertisement money. The NFL is making money hand over fist. The NFL, they're not worried about protecting the guys because they have, have for they every guy done? that they got, <laughs> bro, it's going to be three more the next year at that same position coming bro, up. They, 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 sold, the lo- they sold to have logos on the practice jerseys. Yeah. <laughs> the NFL is getting so much money. Bro, we had the weakest shit in Arizona. When and they about to have too. a lockout. We had Hyundai. Bro. And I'm not to say the Honda is weak, but the logo for Honda wasn't the greatest. Bro, it wasn't a cool logo. Bro, to have we had the Russell Jersey. Athletic Facility <laughs> in St. Louis. You can't tell me nothing about some weak shit, bro. bro like, we bad. didn't want Man. nothing with that R on it, bro. Like You could have gave us a champion logo right. or something, bro. It was the Russell oh, Athletic think, hey, Facility. And since then, I don't even think we had a logo. Y'all didn't have a facility. <laughs> right. Like, all y'all shit was done in the state. Man. That's why they can't keep a guy Man, past his what? contract. But, but so, so but with that being said, man, we're all against the 18 game Facts. season. It's ridiculous. Um, I, another topic man, I want to hit on, man, and this shit really shocked the hell out of me. And I was reading an article where Work Done was talking to um, Devontae Freeman and just telling him, hey, man, you want to extend your career, uh, don't take so many hits. And within that article, which makes sense for a running back, I mean, yeah. he's been injured, banged up already, he got paid a decent contract, um, but you want to play as long as you possibly can. And within that article, it, it said something. Something said that Work Done was the owner of the Falcons. I'm like, what do you mean he's the owner of the Falcons? I mean, Arthur Blank. But no. So I had to dig in a little bit deeper. I, I got on the internet as we always do, and I found out Work Done has been the minority owner of the Atlanta Falcons since 2010. And that shit blew my mind because obviously that's not something that's publicized. That's not something that a lot of people know. And in, in the NFL, there's a huge disconnect when we talk about. Former players being not only head coaches, because we see that very little, um, but executives from a GM or somebody in the front office to owners. We don't see that in NFL. I mean, you look at basketball, you see that shit quite often where guys are minority owners in basketball or guys are executives, team presidents in basketball, head of basketball operations. Uh, We see that shit so much more than other sports, basketball and baseball, um, than, than football and I, I want to ask both of you guys, man, do you guys ever see it being a point to where that gap is closed like it has been in other sports with football? Basketball is totally different because the the top guy in basketball has that relationship with that front office. Mm-hmm. Right? He has that relationship with the owner. You know what I mean? Like when the owner is coming to recruit him, well, when the team is coming to recruit a guy like LeBron, they're bringing out the private jet with the owner on it. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? With all the execs and everything. And he's actually sitting there positioning his pieces on how he want to build this team around him. And then they getting into the, the mindset of the basketball guy. So they, they starting to see the guy as, oh, damn, he's going to be a great exec when his career is done. Well, in football, it's kind of like, dumb job, go out there, go play. You right. know what I mean? And you're not really trying to build those relationships because you feel like you're already there too long mm-hmm. in the day. You know what I mean? It's such a huge disconnect you, in football. You're tired man, as hell. With the f- and then you're not – the coaches are – they're changing so much because of the, t- the, the turnover of the team. Mm-hmm. A guy won't have 12, 13, 14 years at a running back position, at a lineman position, at a linebacker position, at a DB position in the NFL. It's rare for that guy to play that long with that team mm-hmm. unless you're the quarterback. Right. You know what I mean? So you can see those type of guys getting into those positions and, and moving themselves up in football if they want to do it. And they, like, they're all talking about Peyton Manning could have took the Jets job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No, and that's, and, and I, but that's a rare situation. Right. But yeah. for us, you know what I mean, as, as minorities, I mean, I, I don't think it's, it's, it's very far and few and even with the work done and, and not hearing about that, that not, that not being in the forefront – that's not surprising for him right? because he's been building homes and putting African-American women yeah. and families in homes for, for years. Right. Deshaun Watson was one of his families. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? His mother was a cop, I believe, in work Duns, and she got killed yeah, when he was a kid. It. Mm-hmm. And I think since college, he had custody over all his siblings. Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean? And, and he had to, to raise his family and, and do the right thing for that. And that really wasn't publicized like everybody thought it should have been. I mean, this dude was a star at Florida State. When he got to Tampa, he was the man. Mm-hmm. Um, he was with Mike Allstott, and, and he was giving him hell in. And then I think he was in Atlanta with T.J. Duckett. Yeah, it, it, it was. In, yeah. In, in, in the Vic era, you know what I mean? So his his resume and everything that he's done on the field, it's not surprising that he's not in the forefront of, of just trying to just be out there or wanting to be on a camera or wanting it to be known that, hey, I'm a majority owner of I'm, – I'm, I'm a minority owner of the uh, Atlanta Falcons. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's not surprising. But I, I do think – 
I, I do think there there will always be that disconnect in just football in general yeah. because it's a lot of old school owners yeah. with that mindset. And it's, I, it's a lot of old I school. I hate that, man. I, I hate that so much. And when you look at it, I can't remember ever going up in the front office – um, you know, outside of you, only you when do, you sign, you do holler at the GM. Only when you sign. Only yeah. when you sign. You holler at the GM every so often, um, but I can't remember having that relationship with with, with Bidwell, uh, the owner, or you know, whoever the vice president. I didn't even know who the vice president was when I was playing for the Cardinals. Right. So it was different in New Orleans when I was in New Orleans. Tom Benson was very upfront. Deuce and Reggie used to take that jet and be out. <laughs> and he will he will open up the doors for them. Benson was a different owner though. But, but he had been through a lot with that city mm-hmm. and that hurricane and then he understood what it was and then that team started winning for him. Right. You know what I mean? And and they start putting the pieces together. Um that was that was different. Then in in St. Louis, Georgia, we had a female owner. You would only see her when it was like <laughs> I don't even say it's for the kid. You only see this like after the game when guys is in towels. <laughs> she coming walking through the locker room. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh, some weird <laughs> shit, bro. But, but you don't have that. It's not accessible for us. To, it's not an open door policy for you to go upstairs and have that conversation. It's not the same as basketball. It should be though, man. You know what I mean? Like, it should be. But if you open up that door for. You got seventy guys on that team. Yeah, I mean, you got a lot. You got you know a lot. I mean, basketball is twelve, and then that 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 one. And piece. even in baseball, you see a lot of there. There was foreign players go and be executives, and you know, be be coaches, and, it's and be a wild but, owner. But but let's let's go back to who's Adam Silver is so transcending in his job mm-hmm. as the commissioner of the NBA. That's his name, right? Yeah, yeah, Adam Silver. Like he he's he's very trans. Like like the job that he's doing. Like he's evolving with the times, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I agree but, with that. But, but, but that, but that place was, it was already set in stone from when he took over. He just took it to a whole nother level. Right. The NBA is growing. When they get better, when they get TV contracts, they get more money. Their players get bonuses. You know what I'm saying? Like you starting to see when the money comes in, it's divvied out, mm-hmm. and that's part of the player union. I mean, just speaking split, up on that, the split in general with the NBA and their players and owners. I mean, it's it's geared towards the players getting more of that share. Yeah, right. but but the players and 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 the commissioner they have that relationship in the NF and the NBA PA whatever they call themselves. Mm-hmm. Those guys stick up for their guys, and those guys that are on the PA are the guys that's running the NF the NBA. Mm-hmm. You got your Chris Paul, who, who was the president. You got your your your, your, your uh, Derek. What's his name? His, his last name is Mason. He played for uh, Seattle for a number of years. I know you're talking but, about. But, he's, but Derek Fisher at but one point in time was. Yeah, you had Fisher up there. I mean, you have guys that's important to that, the that's league. That's important to the <laughs> league that's in the process of making big money. You don't have guys that's retired and don't have any connection to right. the players or don't really give a damn long as they're getting their benefits and they're getting their check and they're only looking out for themselves. That's mm-hmm. the NFL. You got Roger Goodell who's only out. He only show his face when he's about to lay the law down on somebody or on draft day. <laughs> right. Like this dude like gets a hard on for getting booed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he used so, to it. So for him, no, but, but he's such an asshole and that builds his ego yeah like he he wants to go out there i mean the dude that took a dollar pay cut during a lockout as if that was going to change out of a hook make 40, and, and, and 40 million make 40 dollars million dollars you know and what I'm in that contract he tried to put it in there to where he had access to a private jet for the rest of his life yeah so, so you know what i'm saying but <laughs> but but then you look at the nf the nfl guys to where guys don't stick together guys don't relate to one another you know what i mean i, I remember going back to and, and this is totally off the subject but this just goes to show like how quick the division can happen when Obama became president, I remember this shit like it was yesterday, bro. That night, he won. Everybody won out. That next morning, it was a locker room divided. <laughs> That's crazy. You know what I mean? It was a locker room divided. Oh, you understand. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Completely. But then you look at you look at the front offices and, and, and things of that nature and how it's worked. But then you look at the team. Mm-hmm. It's a team divided. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that decision just doesn't trickle down from politics to everything like that. They looking at it from a standpoint of, they gonna take what they gonna give. We gonna they gonna take what we gonna give them. This is life changing money for them. They really don't know how to manage it. What you see is what you get. And then we help our we help our own. Like we we all we continue to grow, but we help our own. Right. And, and that's that's the disconnect. And it, it's not enough. It's not enough of everybody coming together. So the M, the NFL will never get to a level <laughs> of the NBA. <laughs> I'm with you in not thinking that it, it probably won't happen anytime soon. But you got to think, at some point, man, 
Wait till the summer contract point. come. Wait. Healthcare gonna be so fucked up. No, in the no, NFL? no, 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 it's not. No, it's not. Bro, because I'm willing to stand on the table and say that they're not gonna fuck it up a second time with this CBA. I'm willing to stand on the table. He knocked this out. One second, one second. Cause I got can you All hear right. me? Yeah, I can hear you. Alright, Sonny, sit down, man. All right. We got that dick here and here, so uh, yeah, we know how that goes. <laughs> you can't be spinning around the chair, CJ. It's You're all gonna good. You're knock the cord out. You all right? <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, but uh, I, I'm willing to bet, though, you know, that the NFL and the Players Association fights for a little bit more. I mean, a lot more. They got to. Man. They got to because they understand, one, how fucked up this CBA was, and there was no reason – Gonzo wasn't here last week when we were doing the show. Right. And, you know, Gonzo was one of the head of the Players Association for the Indianapolis Colts when he was playing. And, uh, you know, we, we're talking back and forth. And he, he brought up a, a very good point. And I don't mean to pick Gonzo on blast with saying this, um, but he brought up a very good point. I mean, it's, if it's your first time being the NFL PA president, in which DeMore Smith was, we had newly hired him, right? And elected him to be the, the, the head of the Players Association to fight on behalf of the players. What reason would you have to sign a 10-year contract? He could have signed a three-year contract. He could have signed a two-year contract. He could have signed a four-year contract for the Players Association. There was no guarantee that say he had to sign a 10-year deal. He wanted to keep that And when you look at it, you understand how stupid that deal was from the health care to the guarantees to the rookie, skate, rookie wage scale that with all those things being said, D. Marie Smith has to understand how big of a failure he was with that first CBA he can't accept anything less than getting it right, right because he fucked up the past 10 years. So we just went through arbitration with my job. and First the city and we were working on new contracts. So when I got hired in November, the contract was up that I got hired in, in January. So come January, we were supposed to get a new deal, supposed mm-hmm. to go through arbitration, work it out, figure everything out. Well, we agreed upon, and I wasn't on a union. I actually was a guy that was for land, lay us off. Unless you get it right. Because I understood how bad the NFL contract was. And when you go into arbitration, once you give one thing, you will never get that back. Mm -hmm. What leverage do you have from the city or the NFL to flip it and lose money out your pocket? How? When you are, nope, you accepted this. Mm -hmm. This is what it is. What we accepted was a 12-year payout scale. 12-year top out. Not for me, for guys that were hired after me. Mm -hmm. Do you think a guy is going to stay at this position for a tw- for 12 years until he's paid to, to top out if he's 22 years old with kids no it's not going to happen so you're <laughs> never going to but do you think that when the next contract comes the city is going to be quick to slash that they, they're when they're be, saving they're so gonna, much money but they're going to be forced to you know why because nobody's going to go into that field again now it's a little bit different obviously with football because the dollars are in the millions and but the health care is going to be tremendous you, you're talking about having to pay out millions on top of millions on top of millions of dollars to guys who you just basically said fuck them like but keep this, that same energy that's exactly but, what it's going to be with everything that you just said everything that's going on now with the concussions and you know guys killing themselves and the CTE, they're going to have to figure out and a way to get it right. statistics show concussions are down from, from the NFL level right. to high school Yeah, level. okay. They're going to show that. But so they made the game safer. Okay. So in every in everything in that you say, they're going to write, counter it. In order to right But why wrong. would they have to right the wrong that they didn't make? This was an agreement that the NFL agreed to. They won. That's my, that's yeah, my argument. But, so the PA going to be like. So the PA going to look at it and say, we got to write that wrong because – this is something that we messed up on. Then the league is going to say, okay, this is going to be good publicity for all of us. So what if we have to spend an extra, I don't know, let's say $2 million a year in health coverage for these Bro, guys? They ain't going to do it. They will do it because they already make tons and tons of money with your 401k that's, that they're that the, invested in, that they're getting uh, residuals that you uh, can't every, touch. That you can't touch. 60. Yeah. Exactly. You can't even move it and invest it how you want to invest it. Even right. Let's say you can't touch it till you're 60, but you can't put it in whatever you want to put it in. They're putting in whatever they see fit and whatever they can best benefit from. They're making tons of money just off that alone. So I, I agree. They're going to be able to do they're it. They're going to continue to make money, but that's how the rich stay rich. It's the, They're going to buck the system once again. They're going to polish it up, and it's going to look a little bit better on paper. I hope but so, once, you, once a guy like me, you or boom, we make that phone call in like, hey, Remember me? Right. <laughs> um, well, the time, the time, the time in between the right. gap in which you had the, the opportunity to file has passed. So, therefore, there's nothing we can do for you. 
And that's just how it rolls. And, and it's going to look better. It's going to be a sweeter deal, but it's, there's always going to be that window. There shouldn't be a window for a guy that you know and you have documentation mm -hmm. of him getting injured. No, it's be. not like I'm coming to you and say, hey, I man, my shoulder just got tore playing basketball outside. Right, I need exactly. y'all to come fix this. <laughs> like, nah, bro, I'm walking around here on this bum knee. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, y'all need to come take a look at me or, or give me some form of compensation right. for this. Uh, the, the the time frame, man. You, ju you just missed the gap. <laughs> you just missed the gap. So. I agree, hundred percent. That should have yeah. been the case, man. And that's gonna be it. So I I think the NFL they're always gonna win, man. That that that's not gonna nah, change. Man, I bro. think they they they're getting this shit right, man. I, I got faith in the NFL PA, man. <laughs> Good Even luck, though brother. I was disappointed with Demore Smith, you know, for the first CBA, I, I got faith in it. But transition along, man. We we get ready to close this thing out here shortly. But we we got to talk about a couple things. Um, two topics that we got to hone in on, and that's. Uh, the NBA Finals. And no, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping, man. Not even just the uh, – we can't gloss over this real quick. Have you heard about Kawhi Leonard suing Nike? Yeah. Kawhi suing Nike for stealing his logo. Yeah. Now, this is a logo that Kawhi created when he was in college. When he got drafted, he had this logo. He wanted to put it on clothing, merchandise, so on and so forth. At some point, he signs a contract with Nike. And you read that fine print. And, and, no, but, but – so he signs a contract with Nike – and he allows Nike to utilize his logo, right? But it wasn't on Nike stuff, though, right? Did he trade? It was on some Nike stuff. It was on associated Jordan, with too. associated with Kawhi. Okay, Kawhi was a Jordan guy. Yeah, but it, it was Nike yeah, Jordan. Nike, they all want to say something. But nonetheless, he allowed them to utilize that, and he got documentation saying, "I'm letting y'all use this. Y'all don't own this." But anyways, a couple years later, I think yeah. it happened in 2014, 15. Yeah. Nike said. You know what the hell with Kawhi? We're going to try to trademark this thing, and we're going to try to say that we created the logo. So it was mm -hmm. one thing they, for them to trademark it, but secondly, within that trademark, you got to fill out an application. They said they created the logo. And now Kawhi's like, no, nah, man, fuck that. I'm about to sue y'all because I ain't a Nike athlete no more, so I'm Take not getting a check from y'all. I want New Balance. Take them over Bro. the top. Them New Balance is hella weak. I was, <laughs> bro, I was sitting there looking like how the, how the NBA, uh, and you know how they do the championship scheme. Right. Yeah. Whenever they get into the finals, they always do a black and gold pin. Uh, I'm sitting there looking for these black and gold, like, what the fuck? <laughs> but you know what? They fit him and his personality, though. Nah, like, man, them don't fit nobody. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying Kawhi Leonard is a guy that's like laid back. He ain't going to say nothing. He's like an old care. school dad. Bro, that man wears seven braids to the back. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it fit him. No, that don't, don't fit saying? him. What I'm getting at is that don't fit him. That man on your shirt got six braids to the back. <laughs> <laughs> Them new balances didn't fit him. Right. Kawhi is from Compton. Yeah. Bro. This is crazy. Them new balances don't fit him, bro. He got that demeanor, but, bro, I was listening to the Joe Budden podcast, and, bro, Kawhi's dad isn't, like, went to jail for, like, murder. You will never know, bro. Kawhi got, some, bro. They got him. Yeah. Bro, them don't it's fit home. him, bro. <laughs> New balances don't fit him. That claw fit him. Yeah. <laughs> but but none of this, man. With him suing Nike, I hope he wins it, man. Nike is uh, a mammoth to go up against, and it's it always is. hard when you're going man, against somebody who got those, listen, those dollars. But they'll settle it for him. I, you know so. I was just about to say they got so much money, man. They could. Well, well, you got to look at it like this. They've made so much money off of his logo exactly. already that it's not gonna hurt them to go ahead and just break more bread with him. Right. Yeah. I mean, the percentage that they were giving him off that logo anyway. Yeah. Isn't gonna be anything of what they made. Like I don't know how much Brian, if Brian owns his logo that mm -hmm. Nike created, I don't know. You know what I'm I mean? Because sure he, he probably owns a percentage of it. Yeah. But then when you look at on the grand schemes of what Nike have already made off that logo, right. you know what I mean? For them to give you just like 25 percent more, back, like, that's a drop in a bucket. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? That's but it, that 25 percent might be 70, 80 million dollars, mm -hmm. which is nothing to them. Which anyways. is nothing to them, man. Like how much you think? The Kawhi logo is worth right now. Right now, it's at its height too. Yeah. I mean, it's so it's, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? For, just for the, and it might not even be like in the states. It might not even be a big thing. Mm -hmm. But in Canada, right now, man, bro, he's the bro. He's, he's the, the king. It, it's, it's the owl. Right, and then it's, it's the claw. claw. Right, <laughs> straight up. You know what I'm saying? Like 100. Yeah. It, percent It's the owl, and then it's the claw. Bro, there's 100. no MB. So, so for right now. They can drag this out, and then even them even talking about it right now is even giving it more right. more right. legs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's getting more energy. So now the logo is even bigger because people is looking for it. Right now you googling the I whole didn't know it looked like. So I just saw the whole. Story. I, I seen it on the back of a pair of Jordans before. I ain't never know <laughs> you know what he had I'm saying? a logo like but, that. But um, and it's just a hand. I mean, <laughs> it's the claw. <laughs> <laughs> they they call him the, the best defender. They, they, right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But like, bro, he capitalized off of it. They break bread and. Once again, he, he, he'll be Another back on Nike day. sooner or later. 
You yeah. think so? Man, you can't leave that swoosh alone. Bro, it, it, it's it's, it's so a proven me, call me, man. it's a proven fact, bro. Like they don't make the best shoes, but they make the best looking shoe. Uh, uh, the yeah. product is the mm-hmm. best. When you talk about street wear and you talk about apparel and right. you talk about it's like Kobe. Kobe did go back. It's, it's, it's Nike. <laughs> it's it's Nike, bro. Like you you just can't get around it. They're just so transcending with just fashion and just they're fashion forward and they got all the cool guys. You know what I mean? Right. Like nobody's going out and going to go buy a pair of James Harden's unless you're like a Harden fan. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like the T Max. Like you had to be a T Max fan to go get you a pair of T Max. That's like Steph Curry too. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you the, have to be. No, Steph no, no, Curry's no, no. Different, his is different. His kids is buying them Steph Curry. I'm we, saying, we just but, had a conversation on the way over here, and my son's got a basketball game tomorrow. Initially, my son said, "Dad, I want to go some Steph Curry." I said, "You want some Steph Curry?" Then he switched to LeBron's, but Steph Curry was the first name that came bro, out of his mouth for the kids. Shoes that he wore. For, for, for Under Armour, though, bro, bro, they love they them, man. Care, bro. They love them. They love kids. Steph Curry. Steph Curry is selling to kids, and he's appealing to kids, but. So you look Under Armour like market. That's what I was about to say. They marketing towards that though. Mm-hmm. He still looks young. He shoots threes. He's not super athletic. Steph Curry is appealing to the kid that with the big dream. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Nice. It, it, he, with the he's under, Yeah, he's an under. Mm-hmm. He's a he's an underdog story. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Like Steph Curry is a, is appealing to just that kid that just he can't dribble. He's a, he's a dorky <laughs> looking kid. Yeah. He won't grow. Right. He's not strong enough. You know what I mean? Like. Just they they found something, and, yeah. Right. Like Under Armour found something with him, but he's something special. But everything else outside of that, the Kobe Crazy Eight sold for a little bit. Them, them Reebok Shaq hypnotized shoes with all the swirls, <laughs> like they did. All right. Only other shoe I can under only look at the, the Ewings was a hood shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you know and what the Grand Hills. You know what shoe sold though, and, and this is and yeah. ones. And one sold too, but Starberry. Starberry broke the mold. No, no, no. He 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 created Steph a whole Marbury, other. That was that star, man. It was off the chain, man. But he created a whole other avenue when he when he jumped off. Right. But he had a he had a he had a an, an audience from already selling selling and one. And he had the biggest country, or not the biggest country, one of the biggest countries behind him in China. But but that goes back to the Toronto right. situation mm-hmm. with the, with the claw. You got a whole country behind well, you. you. That, it, you know what I mean? Right. Like it's 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 unlimited what you can do. But I think China got how many people? Shout out too many. Like living there, you know what <laughs> right. I mean? So Way too many. so Starberry he, he bucked the system, uh-huh. and then Al Harrington and them tried to do it um, with some some protege. That was their yeah, shit. Yeah, uh-huh. So, but, but you really tie this thing down, man. What, what we think about the finals before we get out of here, man? Who y'all got winning the finals? I, man, initially look, look, this dude on, talked on, about on, on. it being a sweep. I said there's no way it's gonna be a sweep. I did think Golden State was gonna win. Now I'm changing my mind because I think Toronto looked very good, and I think they may be able to pull this thing out. My son's over here saying, no, I think Toronto can win. I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't, think, Tor- I don't think Toronto can win. The only way Toronto can win is if Steph and, Clark and, Steph and Clay shoot the same way that they shot game one. And, that and Siak, is that his name, Siaka? Yeah. He has to score 30. And That won't happen again either. I think he. I think he can do that. I, I think he's out playing Draymond on every level of the game. Yeah, he looks very. These good. first two games, he's 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 been killing Draymond, and no, that's no knock to Draymond, but he's more athletic. He's taller than he's taller than Draymond, and he's just a better skilled player. Dr- Iguodala's out much more if his injury is really hurt, and then Clay with his hamstring. Yeah. Bro, Toronto can legit win this thing. No, no I'm, Bro, I'm not saying KD that they can't com- win it. They they can win it. KD KD's Listen. done. You don't think he come back? No, I don't think he come back. Either. He's way his injury is way more serious than what people is they're putting on and they're putting out there. They make it seem like he coming back like But this is a non contact injury of him jumping. He tore something. Yeah. I don't Let's think just he's call back that for year. what it is, bro. He he might be done for the year, man. And they they're trying to hold on. But I do think they win because Clay Clay and Steph can shoot. They can shoot lights out. I, I don't think I think Kyle Lowry stinks. Sucks. He all hey. Uh, uh, and he, he is built like say he, he, on he, big bro, stages. Bro, he, he does not perform Kyle well. Kyle Lowry is built he's like a high all, school linebacker. Yeah, but he's not all world <laughs> as a player, but he's a facilitator. and He gets guys in the position. Now, no. in terms of scoring and no. doing all that, I don't agree. I'm not going to stand on that. No, but, Quan Cook is better than, better than him. Clay and Steph is better than him. Um, there's so many point guards. There's three point guards on Golden State's team that's better than Kyle Lowry. I'm not disputing that, but Kyle Lowry is important to his team. He is important, but he, he never shows up in big games. He, 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 don't, he, do, he does not show up That's the thing. Game. If he has a game one, he had a big game. He didn't score a lot of points, but in terms of facilitating assists and moving the ball, he had a very good game. But that's because, oh, because Buddy had almost and 40. And this, this is when Kawhi didn't – he didn't – 
Kawhi didn't start balling until the second half in the first. But game. Siaka had twenty something at halftime. Uh, yeah, you know and, what I'm saying? Like he ha- he has to continue to do that for them it, to do it. They need a third piece. It has to, to be provide energy. A second or a third guy. That, but that Danny Green well. can get hot, right? Danny Green can uh, shit. Yeah, Danny Green, Danny Green can get he hot, can, bro. He can, but he hasn't though. He can get hot, and he's probably the best defender outside of Kawhi on that team. And we've seen Danny Green in. And he's got that that championship pedigree. We've seen him in championship series. In San Antonio. Turn up. He gave Miami problems. We've seen him turn up in championship uh, series. So he can play. I mean, there's a possibility of them winning. I just don't think that with everything that's going on that Golden State has and then these next – them still in that game there. If they walk out of here in two games, they win both of these games at home, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. I don't, I don't think they're gonna do it, man. So, so hold on. So, are you saying? It, so, is it going seven games to you guys? No, no, six. Oh, you guys are tripping, man. You guys are tripping. Straight six. Tripping. Hey, six. Is the Drake curse real? Uh, this gonna tell it all. I won't say it's. A, I, I don't know, man. I, mean, Anthony, I don't believe he, 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 he it. I'm was, superstitious. He was in the gym with Anthony Joshua, <laughs> who we just saw <laughs> get his <ass>. get <laughs> tore up. <laughs> By a dude look like Butterbean. And I nah, love that bro. I love that story from Ruiz though. Bro. The young, yeah. People thought Ruiz was a slouch. The dude had only lost one match in his career. Man. One match. Bro, but, but boxing is it jo- Joshua got punch. too cocky though, man. But I, I think he was ducking Wilder for too long. But they that that loss messed up a lot of money. Oh, big time. And it made Buddy Rue has a whole lot of money. That's why I love it so much. It's almost like so, the, but, but I don't think it did like, though. In so, his contract split, he probably took like a, a 70-30 well, split not, not of the money. E- but not even I'm not talking about from oh, marketing dollars. Yeah, marketing money and moving forward. And he got give him a rematch. All four belts. And he got to give him a rematch. And you know what that was. You know what that rematch did to uh uh not not they didn't have a rematch, but just talk about Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas and Mike Tyson, after they fought, he fought Holyfield and got like eighteen million dollars. And had, a video, and had a video game. Exactly. Yeah. So Buster uh, Douglas had a video game on Sega. Bro, that's gonna make this is a this is a real life Rocky story. This is like all this is really like um Rocky defeating the Russian right here. That's what that was. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully Hopefully Joshua comes back and win. Right. That way I can see him and Wilder getting on. I don't even want to see it no more. Wilder beat his ass. Yeah. You think so? <laughs> yeah. I, I've been said that though, bro, from the jump, man. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I do. I do, man. Well, Wilder one haymaker away from getting knocked out this damn too. Though. But I mean I, and what this showed me is Joshua can't take a punch. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Cause he, he took that one to the uh, side of the dome. And it was a wrap. It was a wrap. <laughs> it was a wrap. <laughs> But man, that's that's that, that's it, man, for yeah. for the show, Pitt. We appreciate you coming on, man, and, and turning up with us as always. And uh, yeah, man, we were daddy daycare today. We appreciate the kids for being nice and quiet. I loved you guys being here. And yeah, that's a wrap on being in the boom this week.